so in today's discussion we are going to see what are the assumptions for a perfect truss okay see these assumptions are made here in order to make the process of analysis of truss easy so when we will be looking into the assumptions one by one you will come to know that they are not real that's why they are the assumptions okay keeping some assumptions while going for a methodology or analysis make the process easy to understand and various parameters are so much sorted out that analysis become literally possible otherwise if we keep all the real practical scenarios or real parameter in the analysis then it would be very much difficult to solve or to analyze any situation that's why assumptions are made assumptions are uh, more like ideal conditions and ideal condition do not exist in practical world that's why assumptions is the word made for this points okay so when we are solving when we are going for analysis of a truss okay analysis means the loads that will be acting on the truss will be making some deformation will be trying to have some deformation that is it will be inducing some sort of stress in the member okay that stress in the member is shown either by tension or compression we have to determine the type of or let's say the nature of force that is tension or compression and the magnitude in newton or let's say in kilonewton okay this value of stress in form of truss or uh, tension or compression is need to be determined and this is called as analysis of a truss now for this analysis we have made some plain lines okay these are not true but these are the assumptions so the first one being all the members of truss are straight and connected to each other at their ends by frictionless pins okay the most incorrect point okay the most uh, deceitful point made here is frictionless pins see you can have frictionless pins but still some sort of friction will be there okay and it is never true that all the members of truss are perfectly straight that's why the first lie pehla jhoot yahan pe humne kya dekha ki all the members of truss are straight and connected to each other at their ends by frictionless pins but this point makes the analysis easy or it keeps the analysis simplified that's why first assumption is like this all the loading that is external force that will be coming onto the truss will be acting only at pins that is whatever the loads is there on the truss will be acting on pins only not on this member okay this is another assumption we have to make then the most uh, deceitful point here that all the members of the truss are assumed to be weightless okay most impractical thing that has been quoted in this uh, list of assumption that these member these practically heavy members are weightless means when we are solving the truss we do not consider self weight of the truss or let's say no member weight is taken into consideration while we are analyzing the truss okay in real scenario you have to take you have to uh, consider the self weight of the truss which is there because of joints pins and by the member itself okay here what we are saying we are neglecting the self weight of the truss that is what assumption we are making that the members of the truss are weightless they are having zero weight they are having no weight means whatever be the load coming on to the truss is because of external load this whole thing is assumed to be weightless which is not at all true but it makes the process of analysis easy that's why the assumption okay then all the members of truss and external forces acting at pin lie in the same plane means let's say this is the plane of analysis then the whole member joints scenario the loading scenario will be confined to this xy plane let's say for here when we are solving this problem we are assuming that the truss the loads the assembly is in the same plane okay which is practically not possible but here for analysis we have considered the same then 
static equilibrium conditions is uh, applicable for analysis of perfector static equilibrium condition is summation fx equal to 0 summation fy equal to 0 and summation of moment equal to 0 these are the condition these are the equilibrium condition that will be useful for analysis of this truss okay so these are the five assumptions that are made for analysis of perfect truss okay number one being straight members then number two load act only at joints or pins the structure is weightless number three and number four whatever the loads are there whatever the joints are there whatever the members are there all the thing lie in same plane then we can use fx f and m equal to zero in order to analyze the perfect truss okay these are the assumptions this is an important topic because when we are entering the topic of analysis of truss we have to consider all these four to five points carefully then let's see the tension and compression concept okay see the tension and compression concept or the two force concept here in the truss is that whenever we are looking at a tensile force and a compressive force in the truss then how we represent it how we indicate that let's say this is a simple one unit truss okay one triangle is there then second support member number one two and three three joints will be there like this okay this is nothing but a perfect truss and when we want to show that tensile force is there and when we want to show that compressive force is there what we do see we are saying that whatever the forces whatever the stresses that are there in the truss act on the pin only so when we say that the member is in tension what we show we will be showing that the force is going away from the pin okay whenever we say that the member is in tension then in between the two points in between the two joints what we will de denote that the arrow the force will be drawn away from the pin okay and when we say that the member is in compression then we will be showing arrow toward the pin okay compressive force is shown like this so therefore let's say this member number one is in tension and it will be inducing the tension force onto the joint then we will be showing the tension like this okay member number one is in tension if we say member number two is in compression what we will be showing that compressive force is there and it is going toward the pin okay for example let's say in previous diagram if i want to show that uh, this member is in tension this is in compression this is in tension what we will be showing we will be showing that away from the pins or this set of pair of force is for tension this will be for compression okay toward the pin it is compression okay away from the pin okay it is going away from the pin it will be tension so whenever we want to quote that a member is in tension or a member is in compression the proper the correct terminology or symbolism is like this this is for tension and this is for compression okay this is for compression so uh, this was discussion regarding assumptions for a, a perfect truss and the tension compression that is two force concept in a truss we will see the process of analysis of truss in the next lecture till then take care bye bye